Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is the first video in a series of tutorials outlining Audier's Zone Synthesizer. We're going to start with a basic tour of the graphic user interface. So what is Zone and what do all these controls do? As you're probably aware by now, Zone is what we refer to as an advanced parameter sequencer synthesizer. What this means is that virtually every parameter can be dragged onto its own sequencer lane, running at its own independent speed with unlimited lanes. On a grid, this can be done by simply grabbing the label and dragging it onto its own lane. Now let's take a tour of the instrument, working our way around, starting from the top. Here you'll find the toolbar menu. The clock within zone can sync to the host tempo of your DAW. If you wish to unsync, you can click on the host sync LED. If you wish to change the tempo, you can do so by clicking and dragging in this box. If you wish for zone to generate the master clock, that then grays out. There is a hold note functionality, which is really useful when it comes to infinitely sustaining a note for easy sound design. Here we're assigning the filter cutoff to a lane and taking it off. Chord mode simply allows playback of a three or four note chord and spreads it across the keys as a single note. And now onto the sequence playback menu, which has four distinct modes. Off simply means that the parameter sequencer disappears, allowing zone to be played as a basic synth. Selecting parameter mode will enable playback of the parameter lanes. This brings up two or three parameter lanes ready for assignment. Note mode engages Zone's 32-step note sequencer with pitch, velocity and gate lanes running independently from the parameter sequencer lanes. The final playback mode is parameter and note mode, which enables playback of both parameter and note sequences. Let's randomize sequence data by clicking the dice icon. Let's start the rest of the demonstration in parameter mode. If you switch from off mode back into parameter mode, you'll see that lane data is preserved. Let's destroy and erase these lanes. Next comes voice mode, which enables the playback of a certain number of voices. We start with mono mode, which turns zone into a monophonic synth, legato, which introduces a slide like a TB303, and the different number of polyphonic voices from two right up to 18. We recommend six polyphonic voices to ensure an even load on CPU. There's playback quality, Eco, Normal and Extreme. You can get some cool artifacts by selecting Eco mode and Extreme mode for cleaner, more hi-fi sounds. Transpose functionality, click and drag. Master tuning, Glide for legato mode, again clicking and dragging. And user interface size with an option to resize right up to 200%, down to 50%. Unison voice editing, let's engage the hold functionality so we can demonstrate this properly. Let's increase the number of voices. We can have up to seven and spread the voices. Zone generates true unison voices, not phantom generated voices. So these are exact replicas of the two oscillator voices, making it ideal for super saw type sounds. Now we're going to move into the main oscillator section. Zone has over 150 single cycle waveforms with the ability to load and save your own. The waveforms are sampled from over 100 vintage synthesizers. The wave shapes are grouped by category. There are vocal samples, modular synth sounds. The oscillator selection can be randomized by holding down command and click, initialized back to a sine wave by holding down alt and click. Let's work on a saw wave patch. Each oscillator has a coarse tuning range from minus two octaves up to plus two octaves. There are fine tuning controls for each oscillator, plus minus 50 cents. Individual level controls, on and off switches, left and right panning, and a sub oscillator with five wave shapes, plus tuning up and down an octave. From here, you can switch from the sub oscillator to the noise oscillator, and the oscillators can be synced and shaped accordingly using the relative knobs. Moving into the filter section, let's hold note again. Filters in zone go right up to 48 dBs per octave. Cut off, cue for resonance and depth, different filter types going through to bandpass, 
again at up to 48 dB per octave, high pass, peak filter, Foreman filters, comb filters, and the ladder filters modeled on classic analog. Phaser filter, circuit bent for real grit. And you can select specific filter types in the right hand box menu. Ladder type 3 is a popular acid filter. Filter envelope settings, ADSR as you might expect, with a graphical representation. Let's move over to zoned modulation matrix, with a variety of sources and destinations. Let's hold note again and make some assignments here. Filter cutoff, TLFL1. Zone has a variety of different speeds, up to 27 different rates, and some very unique wave shapes, like staircase and broken triangle. There are eight modulation matrix slots, which if you click the left and right arrows, you can cycle between. Let's select two LFOs, and adjust LFO chaos amount. And you can actually adjust the LFO wave shape period by clicking and dragging on the waveform. LFO key trigger on and off and sync on and off to go between freeform and clock values. And what's really unique about the grid is that the LFO speed can actually be modulated, sequenced on there. Let's gradually increase the speed by drawing in the values. Let's move into zoned macros section. Up to 10 different parameters can be assigned to each of the six macros by simply dragging that device's label onto the knob. In this instance, we're going to pick tuning. Let's go into the effects section and the insert effects reverb mix amount. Let's assign LFO2 amount to noise level. And if you right click, you can attach parameters manually. If you click detach, you can see each of the macros that have been assigned or detach all. Where it starts to get really creative is when you can assign macros to the sequencer grid. Let's hold that. Let's adjust the lane rate. Let's change the global lane rate to up to one of 27 speeds. Let's switch our oscillator wave selection up by using key commands to randomize them. Ideal for building creative riser effects. The macros, of course, also respond to full CC control for hands-on front panel tweaking. Join us for the second part of this tutorial for a greater, more in-depth look at the sequencer grid, insert effects, and oscillator modulation options.